Hey, hi, and welcome to another episode of Crime Page with Baba and he does, and I'm here in Central Nevada, an elevation of, I don't know, probably, you know, 5,300 feet, 5,400 feet. I'm pretty fucking high up, okay? It's mid-June, you know, it got pretty chilly last night, uh, you know, I'm high enough up that I am freezing my ass off before the sun comes up, but now I'm up kind of early, you know, 8 a.m. for me, okay? Normally I'm going to bed. If I'm in a city, I try to go to bed relatively late so I don't have to look at the world, you know, and, uh, you know, I'll go for a run maybe around 11 p.m., midnight, sometimes 1 or 2 a.m., much more peaceful that way, and then, uh, you know, you don't have to look how, you don't have to see how ugly the human world is during the day, but out here, you know, when you're away from uh, the whole, uh, you know, basically, human beings are just frustrated apes in cages of our own making, and when you're away from all that, it doesn't hurt to get up a little bit earlier. Anyway, I want to show you, uh, some of the plant life here. Now, we are on, uh, we are on the, the volcanics again, okay? Much of uh, central and northern Nevada is volcanics. You can see you got some nice basalt, got the vent effect thing going on. Basically just uh, tens, maybe hundreds of thousands, maybe a few million years of polishing uh, by uh, abrasion by, you know, tiny sand particles and other shit blowing around in the wind. Uh, now, it does look pretty boring here. Doesn't seem like there's a lot going on. You got a bunch of uh, woody members of the sunflower family and woody members of uh, the formerly Kenopodiaceae, now placed in the Amaranthaceae family, okay? Uh, like this Crescinanicovia, uh, one of the or one of the former uh, Kenopodes. But you do have some Tetradymias. Uh, you also got some grasses. Just a lot of uh, the color beige, okay? Now, if not placed in context, this seems pretty boring. It seems like a pretty boring habitat. But, as with many things, the more you know, and you, the more you learn about how adapted these plants are to growing, and what is very, uh, you know, the high desert is not a very pleasant place to grow if you're a plant. But the more you learn about how they're adapted to it, uh, the more impressive they become. So, uh, anyway, like I was saying, it's mostly woody members of uh, the sunflower family, Asteraceae, and the Amaranth, they say, the Kenopode family. Uh, you can see right here, though, we got another member, uh, Ephedra, the Mormon tea. Okay? This is a distant relative. It's actually a distant relative of Welwichia. It's more closely related to Welwichia, that weird-ass plant that grows in Namibia, than, uh, than it is related to any of the, say, Tetradymias, Asteraceae, or uh, the Kenopodes, the Kenopodiums out here which are now, like I said, in the Amaranth. Someone's got to resolve that. I think they just threw them in the Amaranthaceae, the same family as uh, in, uh, in spinach and what the shit, but uh, the Kenopodes are in their, their, their own little subfamily. Amaranthaceae is a big fucking family. You know? so taxonomically, you could go into a wormhole with that. So you got the rocky volcanic slopes, and then down in the basins, you got the salty basins. Very salty soil because, again, uh, you know, they, this doesn't drain to any sea. These these basins do not drain to the ocean anywhere. You know, the water just basically evaporates from them. What little rain they do get. Anyway, I want to show you this plant, and it is pretty remarkable. It's a member of the Brassica family, and it's one of the only flowering plants that's really uh, thriving in this environment. You can see, uh, look at the top right up there. See that the uh, that cluster of buds? It does it does kind of look like a, a you know a little head of broccoli. Okay, next time you look at a broccoli head, which is basically just a giant inflorescence, you know, uh, you could see those, uh, I love, but just the way brassic, it looks very brassicaceous. Could you say that? I guess you could say that. Look at these alternate leaves. Got a nice petiole on there. Got about an inch long petiole. Pretty leathery, okay? Just like I would be if I ended up living out here. Pretty leathery, you know, a little more calloused, a little more unpleasant to be around. Anyway, this is a species of uh, Stanleya. In the genus Stanleya, you gotta give it to it. I think they got a common name for it, something fucking ridiculous, like most common names tend to be Prince's Plume. Fucking stupid. But uh, look at those flowers, okay? It's a massive, uh, a massive raceme of uh, tiny flowers. Each with six stamens, four petals, typical brassicaceous bastard. Got about a half a centimeter long pedestal per flower. 
And it's very glabrous. Note the absence of hairs. It's very leathery, smooth, and glabrous. Stiff foliage. You got to give it to this plant, though. The brassicas, you know, first off, brassicaceae is one of the only plant families that doesn't associate with mycorrhizal fungus. And, uh, you know, they also, many of them can tolerate some very harsh soil conditions, you know, like the streptanthus, the colanthus. They could take a beating and they thrive. And uh, you also got some very interesting secondary chemistry going on there. Secondary metabolites, you know, that a plant produces uh, basically to defend itself against herbivory and insects and shit. All the nice stuff that's in there. Basically what gives, you know, think of those compounds. When you bite into like a piece of horseradish or you have some wasabi, you know, it's off a member of the brace of KCA. You are, uh, you're, you're eating some of those harsh secondary uh, chemicals that the plants in this family produce to uh, keep the bugs and the animals away and shit. What's that? You, you know, you're, you're not into this anymore or what? Huh? All right. All right, I think we got to get going. But look at this. We'll move, we'll move right along, but just get one more close money shot at the, at Stan Leah. Oh, look at a nice color. Psych Ward Green. We're all going to end up there soon. Enjoy that. Look at that. Not a soul out there, you know. Just about every 15 minutes, one of the doughboys goes by. You know, you know, you, you drive in a mining truck, probably, uh, you know, laden with uh, Monster Energy drinks and uh, God knows what types of pornography downloaded on his phone. But uh, other than that, it's a really beautiful pl I mean, you know, so you got Salt Lake City and Reno slowly moving away from each other at about a rate of, I don't know, 5 to 10 centimeters a year. Maybe not even that. Maybe that's a little fast. Okay? But the general idea is that, you know, the basin and range is expanding. It's a thinning crust, and that's part of the reason you got so many, uh, uh, so many of those hot springs over there. You know, I kind of just like to think of them as hippie jizz pools. Uh, sometimes, you know, you get the, you know, your derelict, the old creepy bastard hanging out around them. But there's, these days, there's, there's always somebody in them. You go to the middle of nowhere, there's always somebody in them. Ten years ago, you'd be, you'd be the only one in those hot springs in the middle of the basin of range. But these days, I think it's because the smartphone technology. People aren't as afraid to go out into the cut anymore, which you take from that what you may. But anyway, uh, you know, so if you were to look at a topographic map of the Great Basin, you'd see uh, a series of mountain ranges all oriented north to south, interspersed with the basins. That's why they call it the Basin and Range, jackass. Okay? And again, across this thinning, the uh, whole area is expanding. Uh, but uh, it makes for some pretty interesting uh, topography, uh, as well as uh, some very interesting plant life that occurs in that geology. Again, there's a lot of volcanics here. A lot of limestone in southern Nevada. A lot of volcanics in central and northern Nevada. I want to start by showing you this plant in the wash, okay? Remember the Nick Taginaceae? Little seed, not flowering yet. Opposite leaves. Opposite leaves. And the reason I mention that is because this is a fake-out plant for the other plant I'm about to show you, which is pretty goddamn rare. And you can see it's just coming up in a wash. See that? Just in a, in a wash. It's nice tetradymia. Let's spend a minute on this. Very interesting, uh, remember the Asteraceae, you can see those spent uh, phyleries right there. Let's see if I can get one in flower. Look at, a, look at the interesting foliage too. Those new shoots when they emerge look a lot different. I mean, look a lot different than the, uh, the older uh, last year's leaves, you know. But again, no petiole, just fascicled leaves. Kind of a meh plant, but when it's in bloom, you can see those... Uh, Asteraceae flowers, like over here, it's pretty impressive. And this plant, there's quite a few species in it, and it thrives in the uh, in Nevada, in a great basin in the high desert. You can see those those nice uh, capitula flower heads composed of many flowers. Oh, look at that! See, you got a Onathera, Onagracia, evening primrose. Look at the nice hairy, hairy petals right there. See, the phenology out here is weird. Some stuff is late to bloom. It's just starting now, or it hasn't even started yet. And other stuff just, uh, you know, blooms at the first hint of uh, spring warmth. Now, the plant I want to show you over here is a plant that bloomed at the first hint of spring warmth. This is one of the four species of dwarf milkweed in the American Southwest. 
This is Asclepius eastwoodiana. And look at it, 40 millimeter long follicles right there. So this thing already flowered, it's gone to fruit. These follicles will crack open and you'll have uh, a bunch of milkweed seeds with that feathery coma, the wind dispersal mechanism that the milkweeds use to disperse their seeds attached to it. Now this plant was named after Alice Eastwood, who was a goddamn gangster lady botanist who carried many of the uh, hollow type uh, herbarium specimens of many plants out of the burning California Academy of Sciences uh, during a 1906 earthquake. Immediately after the 1906 earthquake. Pretty, pretty cool woman. You know, and I'm surprised more, uh, more plants have not been named after. Anyway, like I said, you got the, uh, the opposite foliage, the glabrous leaves. Opposite glabrous leaves. Did I got any hairs on them at all? Doesn't seem like it. Caught this guy in flower last year. Right now, I'm a day late and a dollar short. You could see you got another colony up here. You know, just probably spreading by the rhizomes like the milkweeds tend to do. Now, this plant is becoming increasingly rare. It was rare to begin with, but, uh, you know, I think it just, it's its very sensitive to human disturbance is a way to put it. I can't imagine a cattle nibble on it, though, because it smells like hell. I just touched it, and it's got that kind of chemical uh, nicotiana smell. You know, the same smell that tobacco leaves get on them, even though they're from completely unrelated families. But, that you know, that would just be a, oh, yeah, it stinks. Just a nice, uh, Herbivoria discourager. Is that even a word? I don't know. Anyway, too bad I, I wasn't able to show it to you in flower, but there you go. Asclepius eastwoodiana. A rare goddamn milkweed in the vetti. You'd also got, in, in this uh, dwarf milkweed clad, you got the uh, Asclepius uncialis, San Juan and then one more. I forget the name of it. I think, I, oh, was it Ruthie? I don't know. I forget. I think I seen it in Utah last year. My uh, pre-geriatric senility is getting to me. A friend of mine by the name of, uh, of uh, James Reiser wrote a paper on these. Pretty interesting. You should go steal that on Sci-Hub. Look at that. Just hiding out amongst the basalt cobbles in the wash. Same place uh, Crotalus oreganus lutosus would hide out. The Great Basin Rattlesnake. Moved one of those off the road last year. And some lady who looked like a total Karen, uh, you know, she uh, stopped... And made a comment how she would have just uh, preferred to run it over. And I just kind of shrugged my shoulders. And, uh, yeah, it was kind of what I expected from somebody of that demographic. But uh, the lutosis are beautiful snakes, you know. It's pretty venomous, though. You just don't want to get bit. Just watch where the fuck you step, jackass. All right. Anyway, there you go. A sleep is East Woody on it. Look, somebody shot up the uh, report poacher sign. <laughs> Some, uh, another redneck that feels oppressed. Fuck you, I'm not gonna get a tag! <sighs> what are we doing out here? Like, this is fucking boring. Like, this is like a bunch of sand and brush. Why did you take me out here? This is fucking lame. Ugh. Do you ever think about how certain people would behave if you took them out to a place like this? Huh? Like fucking nails on a chalkboard. I do. Look, it's another species of Stan Leah. Stanley! Oh, look at all the ants on there. What are you doing over there, huh? See, look at the leaves. Okay, instead of having a basal rosette with a few call line leaves, it's got multiple branches and multiple call line leaves, and you can go fuck yourself. What do you think about that, huh? Is that nice? Do you like that? <laughs> you know, but other than that, not a whole lot of diversity out here in the muddy, silty, sandy clay derived from volcanics. Just a lot of kinopodes and a lot of uh, Asteraceae. And a lot of uh, chrysothamnus, nauseosis, the rabbit brush. So anyway, I was thinking once we got a little bit up off the ground where all the salt accumulates, you know, up on these dunes, which I'm on right now, we might get a little bit more diversity. But, uh, you know, you can't, you can't expect for too much out here in the high desert, maybe one or two species. And indeed we did. We got one, one additional species of plant, a member of the bladder pod family, Cleomaceae. Uh, same order as the brassicas, brassicales, but you can see the flower structures a little bit, uh, a little bit different. Still got that superior over. You can see it just dangling down right there. Still got four petals, still got six stamens, but, uh, the leaf structure, a lot of the Cleomaceae tend to have this kind of, a uh, trifoliate palmate thing going on. 
You know, almost looking like a, a member of the bean family. Fabaceae. Bladder pod is a you know, pretty common shrub in California, at least in uh, central and southern California, in the hotter areas away from the coast. And uh, it's a member of the same family right there. This guy, though, this guy's obviously, uh, you can see it's a lot smaller. It's an annual. And uh, seems to be doing pretty well here. And this, uh, this pretty harsh environment, this fucking dune. You know? Doesn't try. Oh, what do we got over there? A badger hole? Oh, shit. I think it appears to be that. It appears to be a badger or a rabbit hole. Maybe just the jackrabbit. It's a single flower at Onothra blooming. Onogracea. Smells great. Very lobed leaves. Look at that. Lobed and fuzzy. Uh, look. Coors beer. Brewed by scab Nazis, drunk by assholes. Okay, so coming down an elevation about 2,000 feet. Now we're at about 3,100 feet. Uh, you know, you can see the rock has uh, changed. Now we're on the limestone, as you can see uh, from uh, from those cliffs up there. I get a little bit closer, you can see the layers of... Uh, what is a uh, quite likely very old limestone, at least uh, Permian or older. Actually, probably uh, probably Cambrian, probably about 500 million years ago. Uh, anyway, a uh, couple interesting plants we got right here. First off, we got a species of Peridale. No surprise, they uh, the rock daisies. They love the limestone. You catch them growing out of uh, rock faces and cliffs. Rarely, if ever, growing on a uh, flat ground. Asteraceae is the family, of course. No ligules, no daisy rays, just the tiny discoid heads, about barely five millimeters in diameter. Next, we got a species of uh, Petalonyx. Velcro leaf family, Loisaceae. Same family as that I meant, zillias and the uh, rock nettles, the euchnes, whatever. It uh, smells very, very delightful. Very pleasant smell, all the pollinators, all the flies and shit pollinating, it seemed to think so as well. Got a member of uh, the Polymoniaceae right there. Very uh, unfriendly looking leaves. And a uh, tiny, beautiful Polymoniaceous flowers. Interesting buckwheat right there. Look at the leaves on it. And it's Ariagonum. So sticky, you got little bits of uh, rock dust sticking to them. This buckwheat's pretty interesting. Super, uh, super glandular leaves. Just coming up in the uh, limestone wash. You got a bigger one over here in the shade. Since it gets less light, it doesn't need to uh, keep its leaves as tiny. God, that fucking petalonic smells great. Look at how tiny the flowers are in these. Again, so easy to overlook. You got flowers that are about two millimeters in diameter. Maybe, uh, maybe three. But again, those leaves aren't a highlight. And then over here we got a favorite. This fucking wind is picking up. We got a favorite over here. Bahiopsis reticulata. Got your uh got your leaves right there. Very leathery. Very woolly. Very stiff foliage. The distal leaves on these are opposite. See that? Whereas the proximal leaves, the leaves closer to the base, are alternate. You got ligules on the flowers, but uh, most of these seem to have dropped them already. Flowers have, uh, the flowers have senesced. You know, I'm technically trespassing right now. I guess it's, you know, some, uh, some creep owns this. He's got private property signs up. But, you know, it's he's a miner, and I'm not mining, so he don't got nothing to worry about. Oh, now that is a nice piece of marble. Look at that. Nice piece of metamorphous limestone. Probably, you know, I probably got a little too close to, uh, to a dike, to an intrusion. Or perhaps there was a, it just was quite likely hot magma uh, in close proximity to this that cooked it. Or it could have been buried again, you know. You just got to get a little bit of heat, quite likely a little bit of pressure. This is a nice piece too. Maybe I'll take this. How many rocks can you fit into your bag? Do you need a bag with that? Do you need some more rocks? You got too many rocks, huh? You got a head like, uh, you got a head that's full of rocks? 
Jackass? All right, let's keep going. Okay, so a little bit farther up the canyon, we get a little bit more interesting plant life. Over here, we got a species of Budlea. Look at those, uh, ver almost like uh, little verticillasters. Uh, Lamialis is the order, same uh, order as sage, but uh, different family. Very velvety foliage, too. That smells pretty good. Over here, you got a uh, Areogonum hermanii, another limestone lover, just like this Budlea. Look at that uh, netted branching pattern, too. Jesus Christ, their agnums are weird. Again, on the marble. Real smooth and polished. It's because it's in a goddamn wash. Echinocactus polycephalus, of course. You know, that's a small one, young one. Sometimes you see them about three or four feet wide, two feet tall with 20 heads on them. Oh, nice limestone. Just a dead end mine. They were just scouting. You can see there's a change up in a rock type right there. Very beautiful exposure. Is that a kind of cactus? Got a nice Nicotiana. Surprised it's still flowering in this heat. Look how sticky and glandular those goddamn leaves are. It got all kinds of bugs sticking to them. It's a pretty large uh, polycephalus. Look at it. it how does it do that? How does it do that? Look at it, you got that Bodleia Utahensis just growing right out the fucking rock on this uh, sketchy escarpment. You know, but the limestone has got really good traction. So you don't need to worry about breaking your I mean, you got to worry a little bit about breaking your ass, but not too bad. Nice Brickelia. Look at the fucking leaves on this. Look at how, uh, oh, they're so sharp and pointy. And for my sensitive, luscious skin, just eking out a living in the, uh, in the rock cracks. Like good Casmo fights. Yeah, this shit got cooked. Look at this. This limestone has been cooked. Just got a little too close to some magma. Or maybe it was buried. Ooh, what do we got here? You can need a rock metal. Lois AC, a number member of uh, the, uh, the Velvet Leaf family. Flowers are just finishing up over there. The thrips are still going for it, though. You can see the sexy parts. Multiple stamens, multiple stamens, just like uh, Manzilla, the blazing star. There's the fruit, a little capsule, a little dry out and drop seeds everywhere. Look at the fucking, look at this though. Look at it, look at how, uh, how scabrous, irritating hairs. Nothing's going to eat that. Look, there's a big one up there. Oh. Look at it. They just they just waiting for me like a good dog down there. Can you see him down there? No, it's like a, it's like a, where's Waldo? And look, there's the two uh, Ariagonum species I seen up here, huh? Two species we've encountered. Okay, one with the very fuzzy abaxial surfaces right there, and then the other with the very glandular uh, leaves. Is this fuzzy on the underside too? No, just very glandular. This one's a little bit more green. This one's got a little bit more of a blue color. I think I'm gonna go with this one. I like this one more. They're both beautiful though. This might be a, uh, look at that branching. This might be a, uh, that branching style might be, this might be a subspecies of your mani. Of course, I'm gonna eat my words, uh, you know, in the, uh, in the annotations there in the text. Once I find out what it is, watch, it's not the, it's not your mani at all. Nice little rosette. That's pretty good. Yeah, there's a member of the Flax family again, the Polymoniaceae. Alyciella. Flowers all closed up for today, though. Now that the sun uh, has put this canyon in the shade. Look at those fucking leaf margins. Very uh, serrate. Very, uh, very spiny. Leaves are very glandular and they smell like hell. Oh, it still fucking stinks. It's amazing. Just, I don't know what you would compare that to. Maybe like moldy leather or something? Moldy leather with a little bit of leather cleaner that somebody put on it to try and cover the smell. That's more appropriate. Beautiful plant though. Look at us. Look at those fucking leaves again. God damn. Eh, well, I guess that's enough of my bullshit tonight, huh? Guess I'll uh, wrap this up.
feels good to be back in Nevada, you know, filled with gun-toting wingnuts and uh, whores and, uh, well, you know, <laughs> we won't even get into the cultural side of it. I'm not here for the people, though, you know, no offense to any of them. They actually have a slightly higher uh, auto tax rate than California does, which is surprising, you know, which I was surprised to find out because I got to get a new truck. I'll do a little trading, you know, if I haven't beat the shit out of mine too much. And I have. See what I can get, you know. Beautiful marble exposures here. Beautiful. Like right there. And up there. You just got some typical dirty metamorphous limestone. Alright, well that's all I got for you tonight. Go fuck yourself, bye.